Dark Side Theo here with a new uh project. It's called uh uh DST Reacts and uh you know Excuse me. So you guys may know that over the years trolls were telling me every day, go to my stream chat and like Telling me I'm like this other YouTuber called uh Dark Darks Darks Fidel or something. Uh and I never understood the meme. I was like, uh, why are they comparing me to him? Like people are saying nothing I can do. Wow, dude. And uh something about cats. I I don't understand what's going on, you know? I'm just like streaming and people are like talking about uh Darks, dark cinephil are, is fucking cats or something? I don't know what the fuck's going on! So, like, later on, people are trying to get me to do multiplayer events with him? Now, if I remember correctly, uh, I think that I fought him in, like, Street Fighter 4, but here's the thing, that wasn't a real fight, because, like, I was just kind of messing around. I wasn't really trying to play, you know what I mean? So, like, that match was kind of stupid, so, like, it's not really important. <sighs> the other, uh, uh, time I fought him was, uh, I tried to fight him in Mortal Kombat 10, but I'll be honest, it didn't really work out, you know? Like, for some reason, he kept, like, ducking me. And later on, I found out that he was just avoiding the connection or something. I don't know, that's another weird time, you know? <sighs> and then... It happened again in, uh, Injustice 2, and this time I think I actually won, because I picked, uh, Power Girl. Now, now, in my opinion, <laughs> I think Power Girl's kind of, uh, you know? So I gotta drink some coffee, I was really tired, uh, from last night, so I have to drink some coffee. Uh... You know, like, I, Power Girl, she's, like, kind of overpowered, in my opinion. Like, you, you can do, like, a back teleport, and they, and they can't really do anything about it. So, I won that time. Then I got really close to Street Fighter V. Then he never wanted to play it again. Figure that one out. Uh, so, that's been going on. And I'll be honest, I didn't really pay any attention, but... I've been noticing people keep crossing over from his streams. They would go from his stream to mine and start saying, uh, dark, dark to the Phil memes. And I'll be honest, I don't know what it means, okay? So, like, hopefully I watch this video and I'll learn a lot. So what am I reacting to? Well, ladies and gentlemen... Down the rabbit hole... Dark Cinephil. Now, I, I, I could talk to Frederick Nudson because, like, I was so busy. So I couldn't really contact him. But, you know, like, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll, like, talk to him another day or something. I don't know. Now, I could talk to Dark Cinephil because apparently he blocked me. And I can't talk to him. Probably the dumb fuck trolls told that told him about me and blocked me. But that's bullshit. I should, if anything, okay? I should block him, but apparently he's been saying shit about me. So like I I don't know what this I don't know to, I don't know, man. But hopefully if I watch this, I'll understand the memes better, you know? Maybe we'll understand what cat is, you know what I mean? So like Let's, uh, let's watch this video, okay? Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Shout out to, uh, hold on. Let's scroll up the screen. Uh, John, John with the, uh, $20 tip. Thank you, John. Thank you for, for getting the tipping, the tipping started again. He says, I'm a huge fan since the uh, Civil War era, and uh, 
I love that you're experimenting with new projects and, and uh, series that's gonna be new. Yeah, you know, I just wanna do a variety of streams. I know I can't game forever. No, man. Like, I'm gonna get old. My hands are gonna, like, not move, you know? So I have to, like, uh, diversify vacation style my videos, you know? So hopefully, uh, you know, we can actually, uh, like this video. Hopefully people like it. I mean, if no one likes it, that's fine. You know, I, it's fine if you don't like it, but hopefully we, hopefully we like it. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, shout out to, uh, 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 hold on, what, what's his name? Uh, Dubbity Bubbity, I don't know what the fuck that is. And he says, uh, uh, here's $30, fuck the trolls. I agree. Yeah. Alright, let's, let's get, uh, this started, alright, everyone? Are y'all ready? Ready? Are you ready? Okay, let's get started. Okay. Wow, what, what great music selection, sir. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, what a, what a fatty. Of the internet's uh. content creators, there are few so controversial as Philip Burnell, better known online as Dark Side Phil. Wait, styled. wait, 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 wait. His name is Philip Bur Bur Burnell? And that's how you pronounce his name? Dark Side Phil? I. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought. I thought. I thought his name was Dark Side Phil. Because, like, look how it's spelled. But it's Dark Side Phil. Uh, why is it with a Y? Ugh, excuse me, sorry, sorry everyone. Uh, I like that he's wearing a blue shirt, you know, it really, like, brings out, uh, a color. Now, the only thing about the shirt is that since it's blue, <laughs> uh, people can just add all kinds of stuff into it, you know? It's like, when you go to the weather channel, they tell you don't wear blue because, you know, uh, sorry, excuse me, sorry, that was disgusting, sorry. Uh, oh my god, I'm exploding, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, you know, people can, like, see, see things, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, so, his name was Philip Burnett. No, no, wait, hold on, hold on. Did, did Frederick Nudson, uh, get permission to say his full name? As far as I understand, like, d does, does he know that he used his full name? Does anyone know? Is this corroborated? Uh, he was Dax in, in, in the early years of his career. Dax? Wow. This is him? Ha! Okay. So, so, his name was in public. But, what? But, shouldn't Frederick Nutson run it by him? Like, he's doing a documentary, right? Why is he not, like, talking to the, the guy? You know what I mean? Like, you can't do this. This is illegal. You, you can't do a documentary and, about someone and not tell them. You know what I mean? This is illegal. I don't know. I don't know the legalities of it, but I don't think, th I don't think this is, uh, kosher, let's just say. Okay? With a Y. He sports a respectable number of subscribers, over 180,000, but the more notable figure is his number of uploads and their mm. frequency. Yeah, that is a respectable, uh, sub count. I think mine is like, uh, 1,500, I think. Uh, now, it's really hard to get subs on, on YouTube. I understand the, the, the grind, man. So I understand the, uh, uh, the challenge. Of getting subs. So him getting that about, that is very respectable and admirable. Okay? So I really like that. Now, now let's look at the uh, bumper. Uh, now, now, Frederick Nutson, like, I'm sure this is a good video, but it cuts off the D. So it says SP Gaming. What's SP? 
Uh, this is raw gameplay? Uh, okay, no bullshit. Okay, I, I mean, I guess he's being honest, you know what I mean? But it is respectable that he has 186,000 subs, but now I think he actually grew up. People are saying that he's near 200,000? So that, so it's getting, it's, he's getting more people, so he must be like a very, uh, growing chill, you know? So that's pretty cool. Now, I think also, like, uh, he doesn't stream on Twitch anymore. But why is there a Twitch channel button? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Quincy. Since 2008, he has uploaded tens of thousands. Wait, he uploaded videos in 2008? Wow, 2008, man. That's like a long time ago. I would like to think what kind of YouTubers were around back then. Wow, he, he's, he's been around that long? Wow. That's, that's pretty, pretty impressive. You know, not a lot of people can say they've been around for, uh, you know, since 2008. You know what I mean? So, uh, that's, so wow, that's pretty cool. It, but, but is that corroborated? That, or do we know he uploaded in 2008? Because I, I know there's a lot of people who are claiming that I uploaded videos like in, in, in like, 1990. But it's not true. So, like, is that, is that corroborated? I guess, I guess it is. I'm gonna assume, I'm going to assume everything in this video is addis and truth, okay? I'm gonna I, I take this as fact, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. I don't know if it's been vetted, but I'm gonna take it as factual style content, okay? Thousands of videos, usually 10 to 20 minutes long, and he still uploads more than a dozen daily. This is an addition- Wait, wait, wait. He uploads 10 to 20 minutes? Wow, you know, usually, like, when I upload my gameplay, I just upload the full stream, because I figure, if you like this, the gameplay, you're gonna stick around, and if you're busy, or whatever, you're gonna, like, bounce out, bounce back in, and do whatever you want, because YouTube, like, actually bookmarks where you are, so, like, that's what I think, at least, <laughs> but 10 to 20 minutes, that's, that's kind of crazy. That's like old YouTube style content. So that's really cool, man. But it kind of makes his video count look really big. But he must have really like cared for the audience. So he just made sure that his video's content style was digestible sized content style. You know what I mean? So I think he wanted to give a robust custom experience with his gameplay you know i think that's kind of cool you know what i mean to another channel where he uploads video logs or vlogs oh my god that's his he had a vlogging channel oh my well hey, dude you can't say that anymore you can't have that in your youtube channel but man you know he he uh must have changed you know because like you know you can't say you might got a lot of trouble with that name you know what i mean like wow! Look at the uh, the bumper. It looks kind of kind of weird. You know what I mean? Ha! Huh. He talks about himself and what he's doing, typically for over an hour at a time on his Patreon page. Over an hour, he talks about himself. Dude, and people are telling me like I talk too long. Like my pre streams are long, but he talks about an hour about himself, man. That's a that's a lot of time to talk about yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh my god, what was he doing? Oh my god. Page. He makes over $1,000 every month from nearly 200 different patrons. Searching for him on YouTube, however, brings up far more than just his own videos. There are numerous clips and compilations of his gameplay constructed to- Hold on, I got- I wanna look at the names. Total Biscuit takes a stoob at Dark's- Dark side failure. I, I corrected myself. <laughs> what is that thumbnail? Huh? Top 10 worst DSP gaming to 2016 moments? Uh, oh, you know what? I think, um... Uh, I think, uh, uh... The guy was talking about Secret Life, and he said, like, uh, 
he's a piece of shit because he clickbaits his videos. And he says that this isn't about gaming. So, you know, that might be true. You know, maybe this video is just, you know, it baits you to think it's going to be about gaming, but it's that. I don't know, man. And then, uh, Dark Side Phil goes du du nuclear? Ah! Wow! Look Oh my god, what was he doing back then? Oh my god, I, I think this is, I think that's, that's a thing that, that a lot of people are talking about. Are we gonna, are we gonna see the whole thing in cat text? I hope you do. I wanna see the cat text, man. Mock and tease him, while others offer commentary on what has gone wrong with his channel, implying that he once had a loyal and enraptured fan base. Uh, a challenge to dark side, D-R-L-P? Who's DRLP? Huh. He often is cited by other content creators as a negative example, though their reasons for doing so often remain vague. It's like Wait, so the so other other uh YouTubers talk about this guy and they and they say vague terms as to why he's a bad example? Wow! That what fucking assholes! You know? Dark, Dark Side Phil is is making content videos uploading to his YouTube channel, and and he was making custom style videos. You know, like twenty minutes. You know, mind his own business. And then you have other people coming in saying, "Well, he's a bad example," but they don't explain why. What? Why? This poor guy. Okay, think about this, man. You're making content, right? And you're uploading it. And then random people online just say your content's bad, but they don't, they don't explain it, dude. They don't go into, like, vivid detail and, like, uh, uh, step-by-step -step reasons why he's bad. They just say he's bad just because. What fucking assholes, dude? Wow. Are they experts in content creation? Where are they experts? Because, uh, like, I think they need to know what they're talking about if they're gonna criticize anyone else, you know what I mean? <sighs> like, that's the fucking dark side Phil style of doing things. Blame everybody that isn't you, and people watch to watch you rage. Like, do you want to be the fucking court jester? No, you don't. So who is he, and how do And then they call him a court jester. Now look at him, okay? He's, he looks pretty overweight. He, he doesn't really seem like he has anything going on. His walls are are bare, you know? And they're calling him a, a court jester. That's kind of fucked up, man. He's just sitting there on a couch just talking and having a good time. And if you were just, like, ragging on him, man. What the fuck? That's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. He gained the ire of so many. Philip Burnell entered the gaming community in the early 2000s as a fighting game competitor. Though he would commonly compete in local tournaments, he Wait, he also competed in fighting game tournaments? Did he ever go to Evo? Is that is this true? Did he did he go to tournaments? Was he a was he a fighting game player style guy? Wow, yeah, that's pretty cool. That must have been like uh, the boom of fighting games, you know? struggled to place and earned himself the title of the King of Hate. Philip himself claims that this nickname was earned due to the unpopular opinions he touts and because he uses the hatred against him as a motivator, but other tournament goers tell a different tale. They claim that he received this nickname because of his bouts of rage, argumentative disposition, and poor conduct. Wow, wait, hold on, so now, now, okay, so he named himself something, right? And then other people, uh, say that's wrong here's what it really means these two are fucking assholes this dude is just going to fighting games and he's like Pfft. you know like going to fighting game tournaments fighting be like oh i'm the king of hate because like i you know uh uh take the hatred at that and fuel it you know what i mean and other people are saying that's because he gets angry a lot what fucking assholes they should listen to to DSP when he when he says these things. It's not fair, you know. He's saying one thing and they're saying another. 
That's kind of fucked up, man. DSP, stop recording. No one gets a shit. Play. You can't hold up a tournament. We're in my place. You still haven't told me. <laughs> ah, dude, it's the meme. I, is, that, is that the meme? Is that what everyone loves? Everyone loves the uh, that meme. Wow, you you could probably tell he was just really pissed. He probably just wanted to know where he was playing, and they didn't tell him. You know, they just said they stopped recording. And and I'll be honest, that's fucked up. He should be allowed to record the gameplay because, like, look, you're you're hosting a tournament and there's no sign anywhere. Like, where is the sign? There's no sign saying no recording. And, like, you know, and this is before, by the way, you can monetize videos on, on YouTube. So, like, it's not like DSP was doing it to get money because you really couldn't do that, you know? So, like... Him, them yelling at him and threatening him? That must have been really hard for him, dude. And, like, he probably gets, like, a hard time because of of how he looks. It's fucked up, you know? So far, I'm getting pissed off. So far. I can't believe what's going on right now. We had YouTubers talk shit about him. Then we have uh, this guy not respecting his wishes to record a gameplay. And... Uh, we had a guy saying that his name means something else. It's fucked up. It's fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. It's terrible. Jesus Christ! I treat you like you're a you Want me to run your fucking tournament for you? According to himself, he had poured all of his available time and funds during this period into practicing and competing in a game called Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, traveling all across the East Coast to attend tournaments. In 2005... Wait, wait, he plays Street Fighter Super Turbo? Now, usually, like, I don't like Super Turbo, I think it's a shitty game, but I, hey, whatever, man. Philip decided that he would take out thousands of dollars in credit card loans to attend the Evolution Championship Series, better known Wait, as- Wait, he e put a thousand dollars? Uh, hold on everyone, hold on. Okay. Now, now, I want to say something, okay? I put ten grand down to, do, to participate in a Skullgirls tournament, okay? Now, I'll be honest. I can look back at myself now. I can look back on on, the, on that trip to do the Skullgirls tournament. And I'll be honest. It was a waste of money, okay? It was terrible. It was awful. And, and this wasn't fun, man. It was just not good. I went there and... I was cheated, I was fucked around with, and I ended up losing the tournament, which was bullshit. They they put me against matches that they knew I couldn't, like, hold. So, like, they really, like, went out of their way to make sure I didn't have a chance, you know? They wanted me to get out there. Now, think about that, right? I spent money to get to that tournament, and they immediately tried to disqualify me. So, what I hear, Dark Side Phil spent... One thousand dollars to go to Evo. I just am like, oh no, oh no, because like that's money that's he's probably gonna waste, you know. Like he's not gonna go back to Evo anymore, you know. Like that's a lot of money. I so like that's really fucked up. They probably like send it back a lot, honestly. So you know that's that's really fucked up, dude. And, and people are telling me that people make fun of him? I don't know, man. I don't know anymore. Evo, an event where numerous tournaments for different fighting games would take place. By far, it is the largest of its kind. There, he would enter the tournament for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, where he would take fourth place underneath three Japanese players. Wow! 
Yeah, what Lacking a match! Lacking this accomplishment, he quickly proclaimed himself the best Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo player in America, since no other American players had placed above wow, him. Wow! He was top- he was fourth place? Well, no, no, I know- I know the trolls. I've been- I've been trying to, to discredit for them. Now, think about it. Yeah, of course, it's that top three, obviously, but he's the best American. Look- look where he's sitting above the other people. Why is it- Bucktooth fourth place, you know what I mean? So like Of course, you know, people are gonna try to, to like water water down his accomplishments, but that's still pretty pretty big, you know? So it's really cool to see Phil Phil Burnell uh really outshine the competition, you know what I mean? Like he's he made it a fourth. He could go home to sleep and think about that, which is like a huge accomplishment. I know. I am back when I was like doing Skullgirls tournaments. Like it was, it was like you had to like fight tooth and nail to really make a name for yourself. So, so DSB game four. That's a huge accomplishment. You know what I mean? But other players in the community were unimpressed. This now this is bullshit. Hold on, hold on. Wait a second. Okay, so. Look where he's sitting. He's sitting at fourth place. Fourth. And other players that either weren't there or lost him, shocker, uh, think that he, that he doesn't earn it or that's not good enough? Well, what fucking asshole? They can't, they're just, they just don't want to give him the, the win, man. They don't want to, like, have him have anything, you know? He has fourth place and everyone's immediately trying to write it off. That's fucked up. He worked hard. He probably busts his ass. I know. I know the grind. When you fight, when you play fighting games, you have to play them, and it's hard, man. And and like you have to like perform. And he made it to fourth, and everyone else is writing it off. I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad, man. Like I'll be honest. I I I think I think he should have gotten some due respects for being fourth at Super Turbo. It was fucking stupid. I can't believe, I can't believe people are, like, trying to discredit that. Are they, are they fighting game professionals? Or do they make fighting games? I don't know. Particular tournament used a special version of the game ported from the arcades onto the PlayStation game console, and this port was widely considered to be far less balanced and vastly inferior for new- But, but he learned! They're, so, they're discrediting him because he learned a game that they didn't like. <coughs> Sorry, everyone. I, I had a fag in my throat. That's fucked up. He he learned a bad game, and they're punishing him for learning. Wow. Numerous reasons, including unresponsive controls and extremely problematic no, bugs. No, no, no. Get a little of this, okay? Wow. Talk about I ironic. You know what I mean? So so everyone has been meeting in my chat. Saying, oh, nothing I can try, nothing I can do. Oh, the buttons don't work. Unresponsible, all that stuff, right? And they're saying DSP is the one. He's the guy that does that meme. But people were saying that about this collection, dude. And and they're and, and instead of them laughing at those people, they laugh at Phil. Uh, wow. Talk about hypocritical double standard style nonsense, you know what I mean? What fucking idiots! As such, many top level competitors boycotted the tournament. One other competitor, Alex Valle, had declared that he was going to enter the tournament not out of a competitive spirit, but to gain- Wait! Wait! Wait, so... They- they boycotted the tournament? So, why are they mad at Phil? He went to the tournament. He he stuck it to the trolls and and fought and fought to be fourth. And these people are like, I'm gonna boycott. That's unbelievable, man. That's fucked up. You know, you do when you do a tournament, you just have to live with what you get, man. You know, when I did the Skullgirls tournament, they they had only Skullgirls ad core. They did not have second ad core. And they didn't have the vanilla skull girls. They only had Oddcore. And Oddcore, in my opinion, is the worst version. 
Because, like, there's really no patch. If you really look at it, it doesn't have any of the new patches that Second Encore has. So, like, it was really inferior. And it only, the only reason why people wanted Encore was because it got DLC characters. And that's really it. You know what I mean? Wow. Gatekeep other competitors whom he felt didn't deserve the prize money or prestige, but he was forced to cancel at the last minute due to work obligations. Despite the criticism toward the game and the event itself, Philip's pride was inflated by taking fourth place, and he began touting his superiority online and in interviews after Evo. Uh, to disrespect the people that got top eight at Evolution to make excuses because it's on console, it's ridiculous. Oh my god, here we go. You can't be, you can't be egotistical on the internet. You can't do that. Oh my god. Like, this is a lesson I learned, and he probably didn't know this back then, but like, he was saying this shit probably because he thought it was like, some like, uh, WWE thing, right? So he probably didn't think people were gonna listen to this and like, get mad about it. Oh my, this is the product of the eight of the past, dude. And it's unacceptable. For two more years, and, he was And you know what? He's right. It is kind of unacceptable that people just did not want to learn the version that they added into the tournament, you know? Like, the tournament was coming up. They could have learned the version. But they didn't. Instead, uh, they just complained. Meanwhile, DSP learned the version. So it's kind of fucked up. He's, he has a point. I'm sorry, everyone. He has a, he has a point would compete in tournaments, but he never found success like he had at the 2005 EVO event. Most other high-level competitors saw his fourth place victory as a fluke due to the version of the game being played and Well, now they say it's a fluke! Oh yeah, these people are pissing me off, man. I, I can't believe they're now they're saying it's a fluke! Lack of other high-level competition and his tournament results after EVO were seen to reflect his true level of skill. Looking for you got some idiot named DSP who's a total piece of shit by the way. I like to I like to get that on YouTube. Now now wait why is he a piece of shit? Does this guy give any context or is he just saying shit? You know like I'm so tired of people saying other people are a piece of shit but they don't explain. They just say they suck. But why why do they suck? I mean what a fucking idiot. this guy has brought this guy. This guy, I'll be honest, he's probably a piece of shit. Because why say so is a piece of shit if you don't know why? You know what I mean? Does he know why? Does he? Now, I also want to make sure. Is that is that fourth place corroborated? Is that true? Is that factual? Did he actually get fourth place? Okay. People are saying in my chat that, that it's factual and it's corroborated. Okay, I, I, I'm glad... I was about to be worried that this was already going off like uh, off bad information. I'm glad people are telling me that that stuff was corroborated. Okay, get, okay. But but this guy thought he was hot shit because he beat me and Choi in a game that was like it's like fucking Neo Geo conversion of Street Fighter or some crap. <laughs> wait, wait, no, it's on the PlayStation One. It's not on that Neo Geo. What a fucking idiot! He's saying it's a Neo Geo conversion? Uh, no, idiot! It's on the PS1! What a fucking idiot! <laughs> and, he, and he was so proud that he put under as a signature he's the number one US ranked Super Turbo player that year. But I mean, look at him now. I mean, he's just. With his controversy fading, he too faded from the competitive scene. Two thousand five also had marked the year of YouTube's creation, and in two thousand seven. Oh, dude! Look at the look at look at that! Look at the style of YouTube back then. It's like really oh, look at what look how different it is. See, this is so unique and different. Now it looks like a fucking textbook piece of paper, but back then that was the real. You, you had friends, channels, uh, upload. Like, this is totally different from what it is now. And look at the motto. Broadcast yourself. Watch and share your videos worldwide. Now, if you try that, you can't make it past the drama content. 
it's fucked up. It's fucked up. I'll be honest, okay? It's fucked up that, that YouTube has, like, done away with that, you know? Seven, just two years and, like, later. They also had um, uh, messages. Remember messages? And now, <laughs> good luck getting messages, you know? People began uploading videos of themselves playing video games while often adding their own commentary over their gameplay, a practice borrowed from internet forums. Whoa, they also dude, look, it's... It's Super Mario RPG. I, dude, I grew up with this game. I love this game. This game is the truest JRPG fun, man. Oh, man, I, this is great. I borrowed the name, Let's Plays. Discovering this medium, Philip began posting his own videos onto YouTube Ooh, by pointing me. a video camera at his television screen, then uploading the files oh onto God, YouTube on a again. channel Woo. under his typical pseudonym, Darkside Phil, in all undercase. Obviously, he's a pretty bad driver, but, uh, apparently... Oh, my God, dude, he, dude, he was probably drunk. Listen to him. Oh, my God. This dude, yeah, he probably got, like, really, really drunk, man. I, I don't know, people are making fun of him? I don't know, man. There's no one's, uh, shooting at... Side note. Wait, now, now, Frederick Nutson is doing a side note? Huh? During this time, there were two acceptable practices for recording gameplay footage for a Let's Play. The first was to use what's called a capture card, a device that allows video and audio to be recorded directly onto a computer from a video game console. A similar process could be done with a camcorder. The second was to simply point a camera at the screen and use the built-in microphone to capture voice and gameplay. Of these options, the former was far preferable, but viewing choices at the time were limited, and so some Let's Players used the latter method and found some success. Philip originally began creating videos for fun, but he found inordinate popularity. Though he was now, a- Now, see what he just said there? Everyone gave a dark side Phil shit for using a camera, right? But, as Frederick Dutton, like, explained, uh, it was actually okay to use camera because the quality was so bad on YouTube. And if people were giving him shit for using a capture card, that's fucked up, man. Admittedly terrible at many of the games he played, he often would play this off in a way that his viewers enjoyed, with off-color humor and a cocky personality. These viewers would often cite his authentic reactions as a reason for enjoying his content. Many others, however, considered his laugh grating and his humor obscene and dull, among other things. What am I supposed to do? Oh, come on. Wow, dude. And now, like, I think he changed his content, so now he's, like, more engaging, you know? So that's pretty cool, man. It's interesting to see where he began. You know, he sounds so young. He died so fucking quickly. Despite this, some of his videos would receive tens of thousands of views, a very high number especially during that time, and he would regularly appear on the front page of YouTube with footage of new games. On September 9th, well, now, 2000... Now you can't say that anymore, because uh, YouTube fucking ruined the site with fucking drama, so he can't be on the front page of anything. This is... This, this is honestly making it seem more depressing, you know? I'm more, I'm more sad for this guy. You know, like, this guy is busting his ass and he never seemed to get anywhere, you know? In 2009, he also created a blog channel, which he called The King of Hate HD in all capital letters. This channel also began collecting considerable views on a small number of his frequent videos. Philip's pattern for video production was mostly consistent. He would play games in blocks of several hours, recording his playing session by placing a camera on a coffee table near the screen. Once he was finished playing, he would chop up the videos into approximately 10-minute segments and upload each of those segments onto his gaming channel individually. In April of 2010, Philip began to experience the first signs of trouble. Apparently, Ubisoft had seen some of Philip's gameplay footage of Splinter Cell Conviction and complained to the YouTube administrators, who promptly shut down his channel out of fear of living. Ah! The DFCA uh, nonsense! You know, YouTube is terrible! Now they're much better! I mean, yeah, you get videos claimed or blacked or muted, but for the most part, you don't get bullshit strikes anymore. It's so, so freeing on YouTube, man.
investigation. YouTube then contacted Ubisoft to verify the concern, but Ubisoft stated that they had made no such claim. In fact, it had been an anonymous internet user who had created a false account in an attempt to shut down Philips' YouTube channel, at least for a time. Why they wanted this is uncertain, but the channel was reinstated shortly after. As time went on, Philip uploaded more and more videos until he was reliably uploading oh, over- Oh yeah, look at all those videos! 72,000 views? For Fallout 3? Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix? Got 6,000. Wow, look at the discrepancy! Uh, oh, excuse me! Oh my god! He got like double digit thousands in like Fallout 3, but Street Fighter gets like 5,000? Wow! Ha! Huh. What or why? A dozen videos a day. Near the end of that year, he was laid off oh, from his job, me. and so he established a Google AdSense account oh to start God, monetizing that was disgusting. his videos. Oh, yeah. AdSense is the system that Google uses to distribute advertisements and pay content creators for their views and the number of times someone interacts with an ad or the video itself. Along with this, he started a oh, new series AdSense. on his blog channel in October of that year called DS. Oh my God! Look at the food! Look at the food! This is a diet of. Oh my God! Oh my God! He might. Dude, if I eat that now, I'd probably die, you know? Like, oh my god. Dude, and then, like, look at the cheese. Ah, oh, oh my god, this is disgusting. This is, this is so unhealthy, man. He probably was, like, layering a lot of fat and cholesterol on his heart, man. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god, man. He tries it, where he would review food items and occasionally video game peripherals. These videos would also be monetized under his AdSense account. Oh, the tater tots! Ugh, oh my god! Ugh. Mm. But Philip would not have this revenue stream for long. Once his AdSense account was approved, he began requesting that his viewers interact with his videos more, strongly implying that viewers should click on ads in an effort to increase his revenue. What he wasn't aware of was that asking viewers to click on ads was disallowed in the contract for AdSense, and so his account was banned, wow. meaning that he could no longer make money directly off of advertisements for any of his videos on any of his channels. Creating multiple AdSense accounts is disallowed by the service, meaning that- Is that true? Did he do that? Is that corroborated? He- he, uh, got in trouble? Uh, he claims that he- that people just did invalid click activity. The, uh, but he did not tell people to click on the ads. Huh. So, so everyone's claiming that- it was that, uh, you know, that, uh, he told people to click on the ads, but he actually got in trouble for the click activity. Because people, now, now I think, uh, 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 OIT said it was because, like, he told people that he lost his jab and everyone felt sad and, and ran to click on ads. This is overwhelming support, and, you, and Google, like, punish him for support? Wow, I mean, think about it. It's like, okay, you lose your job, you make a uh, fundraiser to pay something, you know? And then the police come over and say, well, you should have made that much money. They take your money away and they take this the uh, chair away. You know, it's fucked up. You know what I mean? So that's really messed up, man. Philip could not monetize his videos. Unemployed and without income from YouTube, Philip began uploading his videos to Blip.tv, a computer- Well, he was, like, suffering! Dude, like, I was- People are making fun of him? This dude went through hell, dude! He- he couldn't up- he couldn't make money off his content! Now think about that, that's fucked up! You know, he was a free agent, he did have a job, and, like, he was making no money! And you have people on the internet <laughs> making fun of him, saying he's a bad content creator, but this dude was suffering! This- this is really depressing! I- 
I feel really bad for for D for DSP, man. I can't believe the hardship he went through, man. You know? Heating video hosting service and received a lucrative partnership offer. Only a few months after he began using Blip, however, he was banned from the site for making numerous anti-Semitic jokes. This is what happens when you let the Jews do whatever they want. <laughs> You've let the Jews overrun space. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh my god, guys! That was back when it was cool to do that content. Now? Now in current year, you can't do that. Cancel culture's gonna get you. Back then, there was no cancel culture. Everyone loved everything, you know? Like, back then, people were saying the N-word. People were, were being sexist. Now, now you can't do anything. It's really weird how internet culture changed. But now I know better that people are going to get mad if I say bad things, you know? <sighs> okay? Unbelievable. And now look at this. Hello, Dude, Jew. I'm cringing, man. Give me your money. You've hoarded it for far too long. Why? Now, now, is this true? Did he actually do this? Is this corroborated? Uh, he admitted he did this. He got the joke from Howard Stern. Oh! So, instead of people being bad at Howard Stern, they got bad at DSP? But this is a Howard Stern joke. So they got mad at him? Wow, I can't I can't believe that man. This this dude has been struggling to make ends meet and, and every turn, uh bad things happen, man. First our sir made a bad joke and now it's his fault? Wow. You're carrying your balls next to you. You stupid moron. You big nose freak. <laughs> oh my god. Rejected from Blip and AdSense, and with limited employment opportunities. Hey, now look at that Blip. Now look at him. Where are they? Where's Blip? Of course, they went out of business because they were too sensitive and they were too trigger happy to ban people. Philip was suddenly in deep financial trouble going into 2011. Uh -huh. In March, however, Philip was approached by Machinima Incorporated, a company that contracts content. Ah, oh, Machinima! I remember Machinima. They used to do all kinds of stuff. I think, I think the name Machinima came from, uh, you know, it came from uh, uh, when people did like uh, video game storytelling on it was video games. You know, like I think they call those uh, Machinimas. And that's where the name came from. Now I wonder if I wonder if I should have had to pay someone to use the word, you know? Or do people now have to pay to use the word? Oh my god, excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh my god, hey, I, I exploded. I'm sorry, it's the coffee. It's the coffee. Creators chiefly for gaming videos to become a managed partner. By allowing Machinima to place advertisements on his videos under their AdSense account rather than his, he could continue making money through videos on YouTube as a full-time career. Focus. So I created two new channels on YouTube. The first channel is called DSP Gaming. This is my active channel for video game playthroughs. On the other side, if you're a really big fan of fighting games and competitively playing these games, you're going to want to head over to my channel DSP Street Fighter. It's actually looking like this is going to work out. And this is going to be something I'm going to be able to do oh, with a full-time occupation. He's explaining all this stuff, man. And he has a plan laid out. This dude is like able to adapt to anything. Wow. At least for the short term. And as long as this works out over the next course of this year, it may be something I can do in the long term, which is excellent. Now, now you probably know what happens, right? It didn't work out because the shit about fucking exploded. Oh my god, who's this? Who is this? Hello? Hello? What's this? Are you interested in selling this property, man? What property? How much? How much are we gonna make with this? With this uh, uh, property style investment? How much are, do you think we could get out of it? Uh, 
Okay, ma'am. But I mean, uh, if you find uh, the cash offer is accepted for you, you can sell it or you will never sell it. How how much? I want to know the the amount. Okay. I I don't know. No, no. What's going on? What property? I don't know what this is, okay? Fucking idiots! I, I'm doing a content stream style and this person calls me and then hangs up on me? What fucking idiots, man? Ah! So... Despite Philip's optimism, things would not stay so simple for long. Over the course of 2011, Philip would find more and more viewers, but many of his older fans would begin to sour towards him. By this point, many other Let's Players had joined the scene, uploading their own gameplay with capture cards and screen capture applications. Compared to Philip's camera method, these other recording styles provided far higher quality of both video and audio. But even the hardcore fans who were used to his camera recording method were finding frustration with his attitude. Though it's difficult to gauge a precise widespread response, many commenters would complain about his inflated ego and his habit of blaming the game rather than himself an inordinate amount. When competing with others in online games, he would always degrade his opponent. If he won, he would profess his opponent's lack of skill, and if he lost, he would accuse the opponent of illegitimate tactics, or he would complain of faulty controls. Wow. That's called cheating, and that's what everyone does online, which is why you shouldn't fucking play online. Yet you keep asking for me to do it, so I gotta do it. Oh my god! Long, so hope you enjoyed this real shit fest session. Dude, he was so bad. And I, I, I'm, look, I'm, I'm sad. I'm sad for him right now. Because he wants to put gameplay out, right? He wants, he's putting on a show. And he's right sitting here thinking in his head, oh my god, people are having, are, are having better video quality than me. Oh my god, this guy is doing that. Oh my god. And it probably wore him down, man. Like, he's probably really depressed right now. People are making fun of this. They're laughing at this. They're laughing at his rage. His raw, sad rage. Dude, I, I'm sorry, man. This is awful. I feel so bad for him right now. He sounds so, so sad, you know? Oh, my God. I feel like making fun of him. And they still make fun of him. What the fuck, man? We're fucked, man. Question I had tonight. This last complaint may have merit, as his temper would often manifest as abuse of his equipment. This is fucking bullshit! Move, asshole! Oh my god, now they're making fun of him slamming his controller? Oh, Dude, he was just so bad! He probably had so much stress going on, and people are like laughing at this, man. That's fucked up. That's fu- You guys are laughing? I'm not laughing. This is sad. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, a, a grown man, like, get angry. Uh, oh, my God. Also become belligerent on his social media. Oh for God, example, when game reviewer Mitch Dyer posted a review for IGN with which he disagreed, he attacked Dyer for not providing an objective Dude, review. Dude, he, he was depressed. And, like, I've been there. I know, when you're depressed, you just say mean things, okay? That's what it means. And everyone's like saying, oh, Phil attacked him. Phil did this. This is, this is victim blaming. DSP did nothing wrong. He's just going through fucking depression. And, and he probably read that review and he probably had a lot of stress on his mind when you read it. And he took it on Mitch Dyer. Okay? What the fuck, man? It's fucked up. And after the argument, Philip posted a vlog onto his King of Hate HD YouTube channel attacking him further. And he just got all offended that, like, I told him that I work full-time on YouTube. Like, okay, jealous much? That's what I should have said, jealous much? But anyway... Yeah, dude, also look, would... look how sad he is. Like, look, he has, like, toys in the background. He has, like, a post. He has, like, Ghostbusters. He has a... a like, this is, like... Depression right here, everything here, dude. Like he's he doesn't have a good life. Look at it. Like he doesn't have a good balanced breakfast. He doesn't have any diet. Where's the food? He has only only eating peanuts. I mean, of course, he's only eating planters. 
Of course he's depressed. He doesn't have any food. <sighs> but attack other YouTubers, notably PewDiePie, iJustine, and Tobuscus, each for different reasons. While his former fans claimed that this was a change in character, Philip's detractors would point to these things as already existing issues becoming more evident. In light of these problems, Philip's viewership- Well, and, and, oh, do they mention the shout out to the detractors? Uh, they said, like, he always had this? Uh, uh is that true? Because it, so far in this video, it didn't show anything in the background. I mean, when, when did he ever snap at anyone? Wow. Therefore, his livelihood began slipping. Between no- Now look at this! His livelihood is slipping! So of course he's gonna be more angry! He's stressed out! He's probably depressed, he's sad, he probably doesn't have a good life! I mean, he, he only eats Flanders peanuts, and look at this! And people are like making fun of him, and saying, wow, what an idiot! And like making awful memes! And look at- I'm sorry! Guys, you're laughing at this, but like, this is- this is sad! You're seeing a grown man not being able to make a living playing video games. November of 2011 and April of 2012, he would drop from nearly 13.5 million monthly views to 5.3 million, a drop of over 60%, after which his viewership continued to slip in a downward trend for the rest of the year. Things got even worse for him after Machinima renegotiated his contract later in the year, reducing his pay. Why this occurred is uncertain, but there is speculation that it was because of his diminishing viewership and the uh, belief that- no! Actually, is that true? Is that corroborated? No! Okay, so, so, uh, Jimbo says, uh, that Machinima has always renegotiated contracts because they don't know what kind of company they are. That's what DSP says. So I think that's what's going on. Uh, so, I don't know where Frederick Nansen got this from, you know? ...that it would continue to decrease. Philip, in large part, believed his viewership issues to be not because of his content, but rather because of changes that were occurring in the back end of YouTube. He argued that YouTube was changing to accommodate viral content while simultaneously hurting who he called the little guys. Yeah, man, I've been, I've been there. YouTube just doesn't care. They take the algorithm, and they make sure that the toxic drama content gets pushed up in the front, and the actual hardworking gamers get pushed in the last page of the fucking search bar. So, I know where that's coming from, and, and it's stressful, man. ...whose content was being deprioritized, and it was this deprioritization that was to blame for his decreasing viewership. Uh -huh. Many of his fans and all of his detractors, however, were unconvinced that this was the only problem. If well, they, so, so, get this, right? DSP has been making videos and, some, and done YouTube content and no one listened to him? Uh, he's, he does uh, YouTube videos. The people who are criticizing him without buying him, are they, uh, YouTube professionals? Do they know how the algorithm works? I'm sorry. I mean, these people are like trying to like tell DSP how the algorithm works where they're not even experts. It's kind of fucked up, dude. If it even was one, many indicted him for his inflexibility, an argument bolstered by his adamant refusal to alter his content production or release methods. Sometime over the course of 2011, Philip had started Wait. dating a woman. Hold on, hold on. Is that, is that cat? Is that what cat looks like? Is, is that her? Is that, is that, is that, uh, the, the, the wife cat? No, people are just saying this is that cat. What? So, wait, he saw another girl, wait, did he break up with cat? No, no, this, okay, okay. People are saying he was with another girl before cat moved in. Her name was Panda Lee, and she was also a YouTuber. Does she have a channel? Ah, <sighs> uh, this is weird, man. Huh? Named Liana Hongen. Oh, oh my god, did they, did they ask her permission for her name? Like, he just drops her name, like the full name, and... 
Uh, is, did, did they get any, like, uh, agreement? Did, did, did Frederick Danson, uh, tell Leanna that, she, that he was gonna use her name? Like, that's illegal! Dude, I think Frederick should have used the YouTube channel name, not their real name. That's illegal. You can't, like, throw people's names out there all over the place and, and act as if it's normal. Uh, I'm sorry. This is this is pretty bad. This is, like, uh, a, a red flag situation. Frederick needs to fix this. This is illegal. This is an illegal video. Known better by the pseudonym Panda Lee. While Philip's fanbase seemed generally happy that he was now in a relationship, there was a subset who weren't so enthused. Many were shocked to learn that Leanna was 11 years Philip's junior, and that they had started dating just- What? Wait, is that true? Is that- is that corroborated? Is that corroborated? I don't want- I don't want to say it's real unless it's corroborated information. Is it corroborated? Well, I mean, she was legal age, right? She was legal age, right? Is that, was she, was she legal? Yes. Okay. So, it wasn't, it wasn't anything less than that. Okay. Okay, so I don't know why, so why are people, like, freaked out? You know what I mean? Like, she, it wasn't like, you know, she, you know? This is weird, man. You know, people are just being negative. This guy, like, again, is depressed, and he does have a healthy lifestyle, and, like, he finally finds a, a woman, and everyone's like, oh my god, she's, like, 11 years younger. Uh, dude, it's okay to have a, a, a gap between you and your, and your partner, okay? But, like, I don't know why people are being so petty. They, they want, it's like they want to be 50 years old, you know? Like, come on. <laughs> the fucking trolls, man, they're just like tearing him down. They could, it's probably because like they saw that he was happy. And then they're like, they can't, he can't be possibly happy. So, so then they start saying shit, you know? What the fuck? Just after she had turned 18, but most were more concerned about Liana's aggressive tone during cooperative gameplay. Everyone press start. <laughs> no more talking. Let's press the start playing. before I kill you all. Jesus. Press it. Let's <laughs> uh, press the button. I don't know. <laughs> 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 probably wow. You probably can't even ready up. Are we level, are we level two? 2011 also marked other strange wow. behaviors from Philip. So, For so she said that people were upset that she was being mean. Like she was probably depressed. But you know what? Is it true that, that I I don't know, man? It's so weird. Example for his DSP tries it series, he took video of himself uh, showering yeah. with an axe uh, yeah. body scrubber. Uh, uh, well, uh, 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 yeah, hold on. Oh my god, what's there? I see a, a piece of but my But even wall, compared man, to all of this, his so worst cool. trouble was yet to come. Trouble that would arise from an unexpected place. His own fan base. In 2012, one of Philip's fans going by the name Evil AJ 2010 was blocked from commenting on Philip's videos when he mentioned his belief that Panda Lee was the cause of Philip's change of attitude and, therefore, loss of viewers. Incensed by his banning, Evil AJ published a montage of Philip's gameplay footage of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty in early 2013, entitling it, This is how you don't play MGS2. Throughout Wait, the nearly so this guy? Evil Edge did a video making fun of his gameplay. Dude. And everyone's telling you about this video, saying that it's really funny. How is it funny? He was probably depressed, man. He probably was, like, really stressed out and probably having a good time. And everyone's making fun of how he played, man. That's fucked up. You're laughing? 
But this is not funny. This is really sad. The hour-long montage he peppered in. And look, he put he put an hour-long montage. Wow, th that's really fucked up, man. Like again, people are laughing at this, but it's not. It's sad. And then they, and then the guy put comments. Uh, and this guy official icy says. Just cause they're shit, don't mean it's bullshit. Dude, the dude is probably depressed when he was playing the game. This is fucked up, man. Of course he's not good at the game. He's not a fucking pro player. He's just having fun, man. Comments from viewers frustrated with how poorly Philip was playing, especially noting how he was ignoring important mechanics as a direct response to Philip's claim that viewers were extremely positive to the playthrough. This video showcased some of the worst of his play, where he would often blame the controls or game design for his poor performance. When exactly this video went online and its precise viewership have been lost, but some sources claim that it quickly garnered over a million views. One of Philip's tweets, apparently criticizing the video for stealing his footage, predates the upload that currently exists. These imply that the original was somehow taken down, possibly by Philip, and then later re-uploaded by Evil AJ on February 15th, 2013. Whatever the exact case may be, this video quickly sparked a series of similar montages. Oh my God. And, title pre and look, and then more people fucking did it. Well, this ain't don't play MGS1. This ain't don't play X. Dude, this is sad. You know, everyone's making videos about it, but he's like depressed playing video games and people are making fun of him. That's really fucked up. Dude, look at this. And people are laughing at this. People think this is quality content. This? <sighs> Prefix, this is how you don't play, showcasing Philip's worst moments. These videos would range in length from 10 minutes to over two hours. In short order, these montages would overtake Philip's own video content when searching for his channel due to their popularity, pushing his own content farther down the search results. Philip, enraged by this, set about attempting to remove these videos from YouTube. In a misunderstanding of fair use law, he claimed that these videos were violating his copyright and argued that, while his videos were transformative since he was playing a game, these other videos were stealing his content by using his video footage. And so, he went about systematically flagging the videos for YouTube's review. Despite his efforts, but these videos would stay online and con Dude! It is illegal! They took his content and they re-uploaded it. It's illegal. I'm sorry. That's not how transformative oh, work works, man. Yeah. Continue to multiply as the months dragged on. Along with this, another series parodying the DSP Tries It videos would gain popularity, criticizing different aspects of his failures or his character, especially his ego. For example, one user criticized Philip's belief that his Let's Play videos were works of art, and that the game and his commentary are his ingredients to create it. They're $60. I paid them their fee to utilize the ingredients to make my work of art. <laughs> Dude! Wow! Are you serious? Though he was gaining but newfound he, notoriety- When you buy the game, you have the license! You're buying the license! It wasn't enough to change the downward wow. trend of his viewership. As more and more of these videos proliferated, public opinion against Philip worsened, as did his viewer count, and wow. more internet see, denizens- Wow, see how fucked up this is? D so DSP was like, you know, struggling, right? And, uh, and he had a hard life of being a YouTuber. This happens, and what does it do? It extrapolates, extra extrapolates, excuse me extrapolates the issue and compounds it into a bigger issue and, and it's, it's it's awful so he probably was depressed and this probably made him super depressed so he probably made even more mistakes and, and how is he supposed to learn the trolls just claim that they that he wants him to learn from his mistakes but how is he gonna learn if people keep compounding on dogpiling on top of him oh uh, i'm getting bad guys I, i'm sorry i'm getting bad i'm getting bad about this okay Again, I'm getting, like, really bad, and it's ridiculous. Now, I also want to say something. I want to say something, okay? Hold on. Okay. Okay, look. I have to say something, okay? Evil, evil edge, okay?
he does a video series, probably, probably with good intentions, okay? Let's be real, let's be honest here. He probably was thinking, this will be a funny laugh, and it'll be funny, and all of a sudden, dude, this is how you don't play, right? Okay, it's, it's a f funny, funny time, funny me, okay? But, okay? Okay, so, I'm sure it's a funny meme, okay, to do a video like that. Evil Ad should have really thought about how it would affect other, um, uh, viewers and content creators, okay? And, uh, think about the meaning of what's going on, okay? Because when, when a viewer... Sees a this a don't play video or something like that, and uh, they see that it gets all this attention. It starts a a um uh, a chain fire reaction, okay? And everyone starts to ape uh the style, you know, and and eventually people are gonna be doing this video, and they're not gonna know why they're doing it. I'm I'm sure that the current modern this a no playmakers. Probably don't even know why they're doing that they don't play anymore. Because if you think about it, this gameplay probably has improved a lot, okay? So what really can they do for this they don't play? You know what I mean? So, like, they're probably doing it now not knowing what they're doing, you know? You know what I mean? So, Evil Agent. Evil Hatch. I'm sure... I'm sure you'd be well, but I think you should apologize to DSP for starting a negative trend that really affected him, you know? Like, I'll be honest, everyone's laughing at these videos, but I think it's, I think it's depressing, you know? You're seeing DSP going through depression and, and sadness in all these videos, and you're just kind of compounding, extrapolating on top of it, you know what I mean? And it's kind of not fair... For uh, DSP, okay. Became aware of his existence through a negative paradigm. Even switching over from using a video camera to direct capture couldn't staunch the leaking viewership. To make matters worse, Machinima had again cut his pay in early 2013, increasing Philip's financial strain. However, with his AdSense account disabled indefinitely and his public image souring, Philip had little recourse. To supplement his income, he began streaming on a new platform called Twitch, which offered an online venue for gamers ah, to play games and interact with fans live. But even here, he couldn't escape trouble. He became known for banning and censoring people with negative comments, as well as berating and insulting his viewers. Some people just aren't as intelligent. I don't even know what else to say, because if you're in my stream right now and you're whining and stomping your feet like a five-year-old brat, uh, you're just making yourself look bad. It's funny because most egregious now now okay okay now again people are laughing at this and, and looking at this but he was probably depressed okay he was probably very sad he probably didn't have a good life and everyone's like making fun of him so of course it's gonna be bad come on just to his fan base was when his girlfriend liana derided the game kingdom hearts 2 in the chat section while philip was playing it and when the chat devolved into argumentation Philip locked the chat so that only subscribers could talk. The bad reputation from Philip had suddenly spilled over onto Liana too. So, fuck all of you who are acting immature. This is what you get now. We're putting it into sub only mode. Fucking idiots. I'm here trying to play a fucking game. It's hard to concentrate when a bunch of little immature sh Philip continued to quietly wow. make Oh my god. They didn't even play the full context. Wow, dude. And like Again, there he was probably depressed. He, they probably had a big argument, uh, you know, before the the stream, and everyone starts to like poke and prod him. So like, this is pretty fucked up. You're, you know, everyone's laughing at this, saying, "Wow, dude!" But honestly, this this is just sad, man. He probably had a big argument. And what do you think? What do you think happened after? You know make videos and stream through 2013 as his viewership hemorrhaged and his detractors uploaded more and more this is how you don't play and parody DSP tries it videos mm -hmm. 
2014 saw major changes for Philip. Taking out more loans, he purchased a new condominium, this one in Seattle, Washington, bringing Leanna to live with him. He believed that a new location would provide him with the motivation and energy to serve oh, back- Oh, oh no, oh no, uh oh, guys, he thinks moving is the magic fix. He's, he is setting himself up to fail. When you make a big move like this, okay, you really have to make sure you have support, you know what I mean? Like, you have to make sure you get support, you have support for the move, you know? And he probably did this thinking it's going to be a magic fix, but did he have any support? No. So he did. So it was doomed to fail. It's sad, man. Everyone's like making fun of him about moving in the first place. But look, he could. He needed support. He just did it as as a way, thinking it's a magic fix, and it's not, man. It's not a magic fix, dude. Like. It's awful. He try, he's trying to get his like life back, how you're turned around. And uh, people are sitting there saying, well, well, you know, he, he should have moved, but he, he had no support. It was doomed to fail. Back into popularity, but this living situation proved problematic. Leanna was unemployed and had no higher education, meaning Philip had to provide for both of them with his dropping income. His wow. problems would worsen later in the Dude, year. Dude, th this, this is like really sad and people are making fun of him dude like he's he he chose he didn't choose to be a let's player it just fell on top of him one day without warning and then he was gonna move to be the magic fix and it wasn't it wasn't a magic fix and and people are laughing at this man and he needed support he needed someone to support him Everyone's laughing. Everyone's laughing right now. Look, you can have your memes, but this is not funny. This is sad. After a dispute with Twitch admins. At the time, Twitch's servers were unable to handle too much bandwidth, and so when Philip was oh, screaming that's at a bullshit. Twitch, Twitch always bends over backwards for their top dags and to give them the most bandwidth. Well, he probably tried and they were like, oh, you're not big enough. Go away. You know what I mean? Twitch always does that. Twitch is shitty, man. They hate everyone. They only want they only want the hot tap streamers. Obviously. Quality that the servers were unable to handle, they politely requested that he reduce the bitrate of his stream. Philip, annoyed, asked why other streamers could stream. Uh, no. at high Dude, they went there and harassed him and bullied him to the lore. So I don't know if that's corroborated or not. This that might be a fake uh, screen cap, dude. Because uh According to, according to uh, uh, Wonder Waffle in the chat, uh, DSP said that they bullied him to lower the bit rate, so he left. So I don't know what that screen says. They they said please. I I don't I don't think that's that happened. I think that's that's a fake screen cap. Frederick Dutton needs to really do a better job researching the video. You know. Higher bit rates, but the Twitch admin who contacted him remained firm that others did not, and that Philip must abide by the rules as other content creators did. Unwilling to accept the drop in quality, he began streaming on YouTube instead, who had launched their streaming platform, but received far fewer views, again decreasing his income while he was still in debt for the condominium. On January 10th, 2015, prospects were looking better for Philip when he created a Patreon page for himself. In the first month, he made over $1,300 from 134 patrons, wow. helping to shore up his lost income. But this upturn Excuse in me. Philip's fortunes would not Dude, last. Dude, he had a he opened a Patreon. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. And and he had that he made that much money. He had a very supportive fan base, I guess. Wow. On June twenty fourth, five months. Wait, hold on. YouTuber Dark Side Phil Swat. He got he got swatted. Wow. Dude, that's fucked up. He probably almost died. He probably, they, the cops probably broke his door down. And they probably, like, uh, broke something. I don't know. Like, you know, like, that's, that's scary shit. Months after the launch of his Patreon, Philip was swatted while he was streaming. 
the term swatted refers to the questionable online practice that had been increasing in popularity during that time period. Yeah. It I bet that's what he saw. He probably saw that whole army gear there. They probably were all standing outside. Why did he get in? Jeez, fuck that. a person calling in an anonymous tip to the police in the area that there is some serious situation at a streamer's location, such as a hostage, thus instigating a response from a SWAT team who would go- Is that corroborated though? Did he, did he get SWAT? Is that, is that corroborated? Uh, Wonder Wolf's looking at shout out to Wonder Wolf for helping me out here. Uh, he's- Bill said he, he notified the, the cops uh, ahead of time that it may happen, so it wasn't so bad, but it still had- Wow, that's fucked up. You had to tell him in advance? Wow, man, that's fucked up, dude. Go to the person's house or apartment. The intention is to force the SWAT team to storm the living space, potentially injuring or arresting the streamer inside while the stream is running. This particular incident ended quickly and peacefully, however, with the officers bantering to each other that the incident was, quote, gamer shit, but it was only the beginning in an uptick of negative behavior targeting Philip. On June 26th, just two days after the swatting attack, Philip's stream was struck again, this time with a dedicated denial of service attack, better known as a DDoS. The function of such an attack is to overwhelm a person's internet modem, temporarily shutting off internet access. But the largest blow, by far, was against his videos Oh my god, yeah, hold on! The emergency false copyright claim swatted, what happened? Uh, wow, look at these, these videos. Oh, oh, we got a shot, we got a reference, uh, Almighty Tevin. Now, a lot of people mention him in my chat, saying that he has, uh, that the Almighty One has, like, guinea piggies? Uh... So that's something. I mean, apparently he's like he's doing pretty good on Twitch, man. Big ups on, on Almighty Tevin, man. Big ups on him. Man. I heard he's doing really good. He got like 10,000 subs or something. That's pretty cool, man. You know what I mean? The function of such an attack is to overwhelm a person's internet modem, temporarily shutting off internet access. But the largest blow, by far, was against his videos in general. A small number of people began flagging some of Philip's videos, claiming that the oh, no. banner in the videos was utilized. Oh my god! And then they fucking, oh my god! Then they did a fucking false flag campaign. Oh my god, dude! He was probably so nervous that people were flagging it too, man. This is awful. People are laughing and saying this is funny. How is this funny? without the permission of the artist. If he were to receive a third strike on either account, the respective account would be taken offline temporarily, cutting him off from one of his few precious sources of revenue. At the recommendation of Machinima, Philip set all of his videos that used fan art as private, thus removing them from public accessibility, but this action had an unintended consequence. YouTube's search algorithms considered the views on these videos to be lost. Yes. Socialblade.com's public graphs show that according Social to- Social Blade's always wrong! Oh my god, I'm so tired of people bring up Social Blade. It's always wrong! YouTube's algorithms, Philip Net lost 1.37 million views on his channel in August of 2015 when he set these videos to private. In doing so, his videos were deprioritized by YouTube's search and recommendation functions, further reducing the visibility of his channel. Between July and September of 2015, Philip lost approximately 500,000 monthly views, which constituted 15% of his remaining viewership, a sharp downtick in his already dwindling revenue. Machinima, facing trouble after a number of publicized scandals and seeing Philip's viewership loss, renegotiated his contract again to pay him even less. To shore up his income, he announced yet another channel, this one called KO Gaming, which he launched on January 14th, 2016. Wow. This channel was created then he to be made, a Then he made KO Gaming. Dude, he's doing so much work right now. And people are making fun of this. Pository for edited content, something Philip had refrained from doing during most of his- Dude, I remember that game! Wow! Oh, dude, he did Picture in Picture 2? Wow, man, that's pretty cool! His career on YouTube. These videos received mixed viewership. Some performed well, while others failed to break 10,000 views even a year later. Philip began showing strange patterns in his Patreon rewards during 2015 as well. 
Most notably, he had asked for a significant amount of money to produce a reboot of an old, cheaply produced show he had created with some friends about four years prior called Project 7. Well, Project However, 7? after collecting the money, he stated- Wait, he, so he did a show called Project 7? Did, did it show up on any, any networks? Was it on uh, AFC? Netflix? It was only on YouTube. Ah, well, I guess that, that makes sense. Was it, wait, was it a YouTube Red Show? No, no, this was YouTube, okay. Wow. So he did, he did a show, and he asked for money, and then, like, uh, people were bad? But did it, but he did a, a goal, and he, he, got, he got money, right? He did the goal, right? So why are people bad? that he would have to postpone the filming of the show indefinitely to concentrate on his regular content. He also made promises for other videos with high monetary goals on Patreon. For example, his patrons voted for him to make a Best and Worst Moments montage of his playthrough of Alan Wake, which was to be released that September. However, after the first part received weak viewership, he decided against fulfilling that obligation. He also made a goal for four extra Minecraft sessions, but he neglected that obligation as well, only playing one more Wait, what? Viewership, he decided against fulfilling that obligation. Uh, but he did the, the montage, right? Is that corroborated? He only did one montage. You know, the part was really sad, man. Probably something happened. And people were, like, making fun of him. And he probably did something that this was gonna work out. And, you know... If you don't do a montage, and look, I think what happened is that he did not have a support system for the montages. You know, you, it was destined to fail. He had no support, okay? Like, when you're doing a montage series or a new video series, you need you need to have a support system in place. You can't just do a series and, and hope the support's going to show up. But because if you don't, do, if you don't have that, it's going to fail. So that's why it failed. He didn't have a support system. The montages were not a magic fix to his channel, dude. It wasn't a magic fix. It's not, man. It's not a magic fix, dude. That's terrible. He should have done that. You know, I wish he had a guru to teach him how to how to do YouTube. You know. He also made a goal for four extra Minecraft sessions, but he neglected that obligation as well, only playing one more session for similar reasons of low viewership. Though these failures attracted considerable negative attention, this was nothing compared to what was about yeah, to- Yeah, because it was negative because he didn't have a support system. What do you think was gonna happen? There was no support of this. Isn't a magic fix? And of course it failed. Of course it did. And no one figured that out? Oh my god, dude. To occur. On May 1st, oh 2016, while preparing for well, a live stream, it. Philip accidentally streamed himself masturbating. Though the video itself wasn't graphic as it only captured oh, his yeah. chest and face, what he was this. doing oh, yeah. was clear. Let's, let's At first, here. he attempted I, to cover it up, banning people who I mentioned the incident from his channel, oh, God, but the word spread time. quickly, even earning himself okay, a spot Scott. on Keemstar's- Oh my god, this guy! Oh my god! Okay. Since he's here, I, got, I, I gotta do this. I gotta do this, okay? This is a very big moment, okay? I want to talk about this guy on screen. Hold on. Let's see. Can I, can I get it on here? Uh, hold on. Uh, well, I can't right now. Anyways. Keep stuck. Okay, I got. I have to talk about. Him. I'm sorry, everyone. I have. I have to talk about him. It's, uh, he's. It's. I want to say something. I want to say something. Okay. This dude makes a profit off of misery. Now a lot of people love his content and they think he's a cool guy, but I'll be honest. He makes painful videos that makes you really feel pain, and he propagated negativity. And that's not the way to run a business. I'm sorry. Everyone's telling me to make drama cuts. I'm not going to do that. I, that's not me. But Keemstar propagates negativity. So 
he bring it up here. He probably was going to try to get Phil to do another jerk off session, probably. And I don't think he needed that. He was going to make the situation worse. Because who would benefit from it? Keepstar. He would benefit. Because he's a negative guy. Now, I don't care if he's going to start doing a video like, DSC is uh, level uh, zero. I don't care. I don't care about his little, little videos on Twitter. I don't care about his fucking YouTube channel. I don't care. Because I'm successful. I don't have to I don't have to be you keep. I don't have to make dirty money. I can sleep at night in my nice bed with my life. I don't have to I don't have to sell myself to the devil to make money, keep. And uh, that's what he does all the time. He profits. Profits off of misery, man. And you can't run a business like that. You can't. You have to be an honest, transparent, positive streamer. And Keem, I'm sorry, he isn't, he isn't positive. He's charismatic. I, I, I give him a redemption arc all the time. He should, he should do it. You know what? If Keem does a positive video, I will, I will give him a shout out. But only when he does one, okay? And I'll give him props. I'll give it. I'll say he did a good job. But if he, but he's not gonna do that because he makes money. He sees negativity and he and, and he sees the money coming in. He saw DSP jerking and said the money's coming in. So of course he would talk about. It. He was at his lowest, dude. When he jerked off, he was probably really depressed. You know, like. Masturbation is really depression. Honestly, that's what you do. You say mean things on Twitter and you masturbate. That's depression. And it's sad, man. It's hard to get out of that rut, dude. I've been there. I've been on Twitter saying so many stupid things, man. And then I would masturbate. And it would it's awful. It's an awful thing. Awful thing, man. Okay, that that's depression. And and Keem was just going to profit off of off of that, man. He was going to profit off of DSP's masturbation, man. And that's not how you run a business. It's not ethically right. I would not be able to sleep with myself if I did that, you know? Okay, let's let's get on with it. Let's see what he what Keem has to say. Show drama alert. This public attention actually increased his viewership for a short time, and so he changed his tactic, even retweeting some of the images made to joke about the incident. Machinima still attempted to control the spread of information by copyright claiming any videos with the footage of Philip's mistake. These extra views, however, would soon peter out, and with a stagnant subscriber count, the gradual decrease in viewers continued throughout the rest of the year. To help salvage his income, he began streaming on Twitch again on November 29th, 2016. Philip began expressing his concerns for his finances more and more in his blogs, imploring his viewers to watch more of his videos and to subscribe to his Patreon page. Yeah, dude, in one Twitch wasn't the magic fix. He was thinking it was gonna turn his business around, but it's not a magic fix, man. He needs, he needs support. He's a support group. He can't just go to a website with no support, man. He blamed his lack of viewers on the new game releases and the fact that he claimed he was playing well instead of getting frustrated and angry. Um, now the flip side of that is I've actually been doing way better at Neo than I do at Dark Souls. So a lot of group of people who like to see me rage and fail. Yeah, because like Neo's responsive, man. There's no like draft inputs or delay or lag. It, it actually is one to one. Like you'd actually react to what's going on. So like, of course, he was doing very good. I know how it works. I play Neo, man. So it's very reaction, reactive, man. Unlike Dark Souls, Dark Souls is not reactive. Man. I'm sorry, it's not. I haven't been around, dude. I know that pillow. That pillow's cool, man. Oh, look at this is the foam. Wow. Because they watched a couple streams, they're like, "Fuck, Phil's doing good. What the fuck is this?" And they, they left and never came back. <clears throat> In addition, you know, there, there haven't really been many other games outside of Neo. That At long last, on March 2nd of 2017, Machinima removed Philip from their managed partnership program. Since Philip's AdSense wow, account was still- Wow, that's fucked up! He's 
bringing them money, and then they removed him. Wow, they removed him from the contract because of that, man. Banned, he had no way on his own to make money from any of his YouTube channels. He began to panic. However, within the month, a company named Curse offered Philip another contract, and yeah, Philip's attitude Curse. immediately turned again. I again. remember Curse, and then the trolls, right? The trolls got rid of him from that, right? Though some of his thoughts were mixed. On one hand, he was making more money than he had been with his Machinima contract, but on the other, he had lost the protection from automatic content ID claims that Machinima's managed partnership had provided him meaning that videos of his with copyrighted music or video would have the money earned from them taken away. Sometime in April, a company by the name of Poltavi approached Philip with a tempting offer. They told Philip that they could offer him more money than Curse was currently giving him, and more. They promised that they could give uh, him Baltavi? another managed partnership as- Ah, uh, is, is this the other V? People are saying that this is another V, but you know what? I mean, I haven't seen the V where he talks about Mountain Dew and Fanta. Or, or, or was it Cheetos and Fanta? I didn't, I didn't see that V yet. I, I kind of was expecting to see the, uh, the, che the, the, uh, the Doritos and uh, Fanta, but I didn't see that. As well as one other thing, that they would find all of the parody videos that had become so popular and claim them for Philip, placing advertisements on them and funneling that money to him. Tantalized, Philip removed his partnership with Curse and began struggling to enter a new partnership with Poltavi, despite being unable to find any information on them online. After being strung along for some time, he realized that he had been duped. Poltavi was a front for another company, Laveria Media, who currently didn't have the clout with YouTube to offer him a managed partnership or meet any of their other promises. Flustered, Philip returned to Curse, who agreed to take him back one last time in May. For now, Philip's short-term future seems somewhat secure, despite everything that has happened to him. He claims to be making good money from streaming on Twitch, and his partnership with Curse will be at least enough for him to pay his bills. And now we know what happened! Because now he's on YouTube again, and because Twitch fucked it! Wow! And he was making good money on Twitch too, man! And shit happens, man! I, look, everyone's like laughing at this guy, but this it's sad, man! I'm very sad for this guy! Even so, his viewership is steadily decreasing. Where he once had nearly 13.5 million views a month, wow. this number has decayed to 1.84 million. And, and I his... think that was actually going up and up and up and up because he's, he's streaming on YouTube again, right? Deal with Curse were to break, it's uncertain what he'd do. He survives online with dwindling viewership and as a joke amongst other content creators, but he also serves as a warning to those same creators about the volatility of a fan base and how quickly it can turn against them. Yeah, man, he was he was a trailblazer for for content creation. Honestly, if you think about it, wow. Is that it? Oh. During pro wait, is there corroboration to this? Yes, there is corroboration. He both of them mentioned this on Twitter. Okay, okay, so we can read this and it'll be honest. During production of this video, Philip and Leanna broke off their relationship after Phil discussed Leanna's personal medical issues in a vlog. Uh, he, I don't think he did. I think he probably just said that she just was in there for, for something and that was it. I think everyone's making that into a big deal. It's not, honestly. But I don't know. I just see the video. I didn't, and he didn't talk about it. So I, I don't know. I don't know what happened, Dan. Philip now lives alone. Uh, actually... He lives with a loving wife and kitty cat, Jasper Kitty son. So, like, I don't, he's not living alone anymore. He's living, he has a positive life. He finally has a support system. It took him years, but he, he finally made it, man. All right, that's the end. Okay, everyone. Now, I want to I wanna, I wanna do a, a final thoughts uh, portion, okay? So I watched down the rabbit hole, Dark Cinefil, Dark Side Phil. <laughs> I almost made the same mistake again, man. Uh. Oh. Uh.
Okay. So what do I think of, of what happened, right? I think it's it's a sad case, man. Like, DSP was a, was depressed, dude. And he was trying to, to make it out, you know, as a YouTuber, the streamer. And it just wouldn't work out, man. He, he needed a support system. Like, you know, the video brings up Rambo and Howard, but they don't really talk about that. What happened to them? You know, were these people actually friends or were they fake friends? Were they fans? Like, what were these people to him? And then he had Leanna, which also seemed like she was a fake girlfriend. Like, she was probably, like, probably, like, drinking him along and making fun of him. And then he had to break it up with her because, like, she was probably being mean to him and was probably saying mean things. And and I think he, she made him drive to her work to get the car or something. I, I don't remember that. I think she made him eat food that he didn't want to eat. I I don't know. I think he's. I think she. I think she also made him pay for his, her medical bills. I I don't remember. I don't know. I didn't watch the video, but I'll be honest. I think I he was just surrounded by bad support. You know, he was trying to find the magic fix to like support his life, but he didn't have the support system. You know, and then he had Keem coming to his life, making fun of his, his uh, not, uh, masturbation video. And like that, and that really wasn't anything. But people are making fun of him again, and then like yet uh, people making fun of him for vague reasons. Like total biscot made fun of his fucking uh, uh, gameplay, even though he didn't say what was what was so bad. Then he went to a tournament. People were making fun of his tournament, and then saying that he didn't earn top four, which he did because he was top four. And they said that the game was wrong, but he learned the game. So why is he why is he singled out? Like. It's really sad, man. And, like, I feel for... Everyone's making fun of him being the fourth place Evo player. But, you know, are you guys fourth place Evo players? Uh, no. You guys are, uh... Uh, uh, there's random people online who just make shit up, you know? Or just people who spout memes, you know? And I know my people in my chat don't mean it, but they're spreading misinformation. And when I see that, it hurts, okay? You're spreading... You're spreading toxicity, and we can't have that in my chat anymore, okay? So I urge you guys, I implore you, it behooves you to, like, leave it, leave it alone, man. Leave, leave DSP alone, okay? He's just making content, you know? And you're making fun of him, you're saying, oh my god, he doesn't earn fourth place, oh, oh, where's the input? So, Mountain Dew Phantom Doritos, but like... The dude was depressed. They make fun of him masturbating. Like, he was sad, man. When you saw him do that, he was sad, man. He, did he look like he had a smile on his face? Was he having a good time? Like, he was miserable. And then, like, people made fun of him. Like, it's fucked up, man. And then he moved, thinking that it was going to be the magic fix, and it wasn't. And people are now saying that he got he, he filed through bankruptcy. I, look, I don't know. Uh, Frederick Dunson did not talk about that, so I'm not addressing the, the bankruptcy even if it happened, okay? And then people are saying that he got married. I don't know if that's true, but, like, I'm glad he got married. But he, he has a sad life, man. I'm very, it's very sad. It's very sad. And people are making fun of him. And it's not right. It's not right, Okay. I know people like to come in with their memes, but I, I, I gotta say, I saw some of the memes in this video, and in context, it's not funny, you know? Like, the Kingdom Hearts incident, people uh, bring that up, they joke about putting chats in some only mode, not funny, because, like, DSV Pry was going through depression with his, with his girlfriend back then, and people were making fun of that, and it's not right, you know? And... Uh, he then did a shower video, like, that's sad, too. He was probably depressed, you know? I feel sorry for him, you know? Like, he's busting his ass playing Mario sometimes. He's playing Street Fighter. And I think... Uh, uh, excuse me. That's excuse me. Whew. That, uh, you know, like, be that, like he, he's teaching people how to play Super Turbo. People are making fun of that. It's fucked up, man. So, please... Guys, my chat, when I stream, I don't want to see any more memes, man. You got, leave him alone. Leave leave DSP alone. And honestly, I don't see the crossover. Like, yeah, I get mad at games. Yeah, I, I say things. But, like, the dude was was depressed, man. 
And you did have a healthy lifestyle. You ate nothing but planters, peanuts, we saw in the kitchen. And he ate fast food all the time. Like, we saw the tater tots, and that looked awful. Like, it looked... It looked bad, man. Well, everyone, thank you for watching the, uh, the, uh, uh, the project. Uh, it looked like it was a successful project. Uh, it, I, oh, uh, you know, we got a lot of contributions. I didn't even address that. Uh, thank you to, uh, Anonymous for a whopping $300 tip. Oh, oh, that, oh my god. Oh, and then, and then two minute man comes in with a $400 tip. Oh my god, you guys are so... So generous. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Dude, we're wrapping up. I can't even I can't even put on a hat. I can't I can't, man. I can't even put on the glasses. They're like they're right there. I've seen the glasses, but I, I you know, I'm wrapping up. You know, I have no time. You know, look look, you know, I would do it tomorrow, but i I have my day off, man. Usually I would, but I have my day off, man, so like I I can't. Okay. I'm gonna go to the dump and do all boring things because it's my day off. Wow. But thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was a big success. So hopefully, uh, we'll do it again. And I think the next one I want to do is going to react to uh, something else. I don't know yet. I'll have to think about that, you know? Uh, so thank you for watching this project. It was a huge success. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Uh. Yeah, I think that's, that's it. And, uh, you know, for those of you who want to know, tomorrow I'll be... St oh, not tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, day I I'm day away. Uh, I'll be back uh, Saturday. And with... Uh, in the morning, I'll be playing I Am Fish. And then at night, I it's another whopping Skyrim After Dark Hours. And we're going to be chilling with dragons. And we're going to... We're gonna have a fun time where I'm gonna like walk around and, and I have a big patsy that takes care of all the enemies for me. It's gonna be a chill time. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great. So, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for a great streaming day. You know, this was a massive success. I think it's great. Everyone loves it. Everyone in chat say, do it again. Everyone say, I did a, I did a good job. Wonder Wobble said I was fair and balanced, and I and I I I was refreshing, and I like to hear that. I what I you know a lot of people to say a lot of shit to DSP, but you know honestly I know where it's coming from, man. You know what I mean? I I, I feel it. I, I I get it. So I I I wanted to give him like the benefit of the doubt because I've been there, man, and I think he just had a bad break, you know. So you know. Okay, sorry, that was a stretch, man. Oh, I feel so great after a stretch. Oh. All right, I'll see you guys later, man. Thank you for watching. Uh, bye.